All right, so now we'll go ahead and take a look at how to apply the little logo decal thing and some of this text down here. And uh, we'll see how easy it is to do something like this and one of the drawbacks for having stacked our UV shells. We got some benefits out of it, which was increased textile density, but we're about to see one of the negative uh, consequences of it. So we'll look at the textures that I'm gonna use first. I made these in Photoshop very easily. A uh, few things that are worth mentioning is the images need to be a square. It doesn't matter what size square, as so long as the resolution is good enough. Uh, it it's, uh, you know, doesn't need to be a power of two. But if you don't make it a square, then Painter will basically rescale it to a square and you'll get some distortion in your textures. So the other thing that I've done here that's worth mentioning is the texture names. They have a little string in it, in this case knife, that's going to make it easy for me to find because they'll just kind of get dumped into the uh, alphas folder and then there's all these to sort through so it can be a little bit of a, of a challenge. So we'll go to file, import resources, go to add resources. Here's our little textures here. We're going to add these as alphas and we are going to bring them into current session. That's okay. And there they are. So we'll start off with a, we'll call this one like decal, and this will be our little spider uh, icon thing here. So I'm gonna add a black mask, and I'm gonna add a fill. And then into the fill, you just drag your little logo, whatever it is that you want it to be. And to make this a little bit clearer what's going on, I'm gonna hop over to 2D, 3D. So you can see here in the, th in the 2D view, this is basically the UV is what's going on. So our texture is being applied to the whole thing. And so it's showing up a little bit over here and we've got some back there and that's obviously not what we want. What we want is for it to be a little tiny thing right there. So what we can do is if you hold shift, it'll snap your logo or whatever it is to, to maintain the square layout. Zoom in, get them holding shift and we'll just kind of eyeball this in. You can see we've got all these tiles everywhere. We don't want that. We could just, what you can do is just go to UV wrap and just turn that to none. And then you're just going to get your single one. And there is our little icon thing there. Okay. So let's hop out of the 2D, 3D. We'll just go back to our 3D view only. And now we can modify this so that we're getting something that makes a little bit more sense for what that thing actually looks like. And I'm going to I think it's got like a little tiny bit of a, of a deboss to it. So we can actually go to our height and just kind of make that a tiny bit negative. Don't want to go crazy with it. And then it is metal. So we'll want to make sure that we're all the way up on the metalness. And it's a little bit less consistent in terms of it's like the color there, but I don't think we need to get too crazy with it. We can just make it something kind of like that. And one of the cool things here is it's going to be on the other side automatically because we stacked our UV shells. So whatever we do to one side is going to happen on the other. Let me go ahead and increase the roughness. That might be what's jumping out a little bit at me. So that's the cool thing about stacking shells. Now the place where you want to be careful when you stack shells is if you've got text and I'll show you why in just a moment. We'll come over here and we'll basically just repeat all of those steps. I'm going to add a black mask and then into the mask we will add a fill and then we'll drag our little spider co into the fill. We can hop directly into 2D view here just to make this easy. I will hold shift to scale it. And it's gonna live over here. We can rotate it, kind of zoom in a little bit, hold shift to keep it consistent. And then I'm going to turn off the repeat so I can see what I'm doing a little bit better. And you know, whatever, I'm just kinda, I think it's approximately, it's not quite, it's more parallel to the handle than it is to that cut right there. So we'll whatever, just kinda try to get as close to that as we can. And then I'm gonna hop out of the 2D view. We'll go back into 3D so you can see it right there. And we can probably actually just make it the exact same is that so you can see whatever maybe I could have made it a little bit a little bit heavier a little bit bolder in the in the text but it's fine so here's the problem right like on the other side it's going to be backwards so that's just a thing to keep in mind as you are uh, doing the, the the shell stuff like I could have probably cut the shell here and maybe here if I've got an edge there I probably do 
And then I could have had this section be unique, so both of these could have been totally fine, and then the rest of this would have been stacked, so I still get a, a little bit of the benefit of stacking. I mean, that's still a, a pretty significant amount of UV space, and I could throw that in there. But in this case, I don't actually care that hard. I'm going to get rid of that layer and uh, go ahead and we can just let that be how it's going to be. Uh, we could throw a little bit of some stuff in here if we wanted. Basically just duplicate that layer, a decal layer, and then we can change the value so it's like a little bit brighter and maybe like a little, I don't know, a little duller or something. And then I'm just going to add a paint on top of this. And we'll go to brushes. And I'll just grab one of these little like dirt brushes. We'll reduce our flow and our opacity. Whoops, let me make sure I'm set, I'm, I've got this set to multiply, which we've already covered a little bit. Oh, it's already white, so I actually need to be painting in black here. And make sure I've got my paint layer selected. There we go. And I guess I don't have any uh, any height on there. So as I'm painting it in, I'm painting in like a zero height, which I don't really want to do. The rest of the stuff is fine. So I'm just going to disable the height on my, my variation layer. And then we can come back to that paint. Add a little more in. Maybe in this case, because we're... Our values are kind of inverted. We can kind of flip these guys around so the light one's on the bottom. All right. So whatever, right? Just kind of trying to get something in there that, that's vaguely similar. And it'll be translated over to the other side. So now let's just add like a real quick overall, like a little bit of dust, maybe like a little bit of oil in the crevices. And, and I think we'll probably call it good. So we'll start off with an oil. And the oil we're going to make black and very shiny and not metallic at all and then I'm going to add a black mask and we'll go over to the smart masks and we're just looking for something that's got some cavity stuff happening to it it's like dirt cavities that might be a, a good one to start with so it gets real subtle right like you can only kind of see it where the where the light hits it which isn't too bad at all like maybe you wouldn't want it like in there, but everywhere else, whatever, it's kind of okay. You know, you can always add a paint and turn on your symmetry. I wonder if it's going to remember my symmetry. Yeah, okay, cool. And it's also like, it's on this, whatever, right? Like, it's fine. I think that's actually kind of a nice look how it's, it's just randomly showing up along that, that thing there. Maybe you wouldn't want it like right on the top. The plastic probably wouldn't hang on to too much of that stuff, but the metal certainly would. And maybe we'll like add a little bit. You can you can have two different paints. One of them's like with white and one's black, if you are so inclined. But I think I'm just gonna try to do this as quickly as possible. Add a little something in there. Like maybe like a little bit more. Not so much on the outside, but on the inside here. And then we can make another one, another fill up here called dirt. And the dirt's going to be like a real dark red. This one's going to be really rough. We'll add a black mask. And then try to find, I don't know, dust surface perhaps. So this is what I'm talking about with it being like super duper procedural. I don't think that's the right mask. It's fine, whatever. We could do like edge rust. And then just take the opacity way down or something. That's probably too much. Well, we're getting a little bit close to time here. So I'll just try to get this done very, very quickly. We'll try, we'll try one more here. Maybe like dust subtle. There we go. That's fine. It's a little strange how it's showing up in the shadow there, so I'm going to paint that out. I'll just add a paint. 
We'll go to brushes. Go to dirt. Check the other side. Looks pretty good. All right, let's do a quick render pass. And tap, uh, tap the tab key here. Now I can turn symmetry off. Get rid of that red line. We'll go to rendering mode. So the shader settings, fine. Here we go, this is what I'm looking for. So I want to clear color for the background. I'd like to darken it up a little bit. I'm gonna turn the ground off because I don't need that shadow there. Let's try to get the, the light oriented so that we've got a nice highlight there. And then let's see, anything else we need to mess with? I think that's all okay. And then we can go to the render settings and increase the samples up, which are like a hundred. Give it a little more time. I think it actually looks fine. Like there's some little tiny little artifacts here, little white dots. There's some stuff going on here, like some banding. That's a little bit strange, but I think that's just because this is so shiny and it's reflecting what's going on around it. So anyway, there you have it. That's the full process of creating this asset starting with the high poly infusion, doing a retop with UVs in Maya, bakes and texturing in Substance Painter. So please feel free to leave questions in the comments section. And if you're uh, one of my students, you can shoot me an email at the email address that I have provided. Thank you very much.